between Absolute Pro going up against Chaos. And it's going to be Chaos on the blue side and Absolute Pro on the red side. And immediately the first <laughs> lock in. That, what do you think that, about that lock? That was a really quick lock. I want to see what sort of composition is built around this. Yet again, Zilong being removed. This time, Chao being removed as well. We do see Aurora being locked in. Aurora did do some pretty significance, although maybe not to her fullest potential. Assess being hovered on again. Ooh. Is that, is that what I think it is? That is Ooh. Ruby. Is that what I think it is? That's a Ruby being locked in. That's a Ruby. Ruby, Ooh. baby, 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 we baby. We've got a Ruby. We do see Tigreal as well being locked down. Tigreal was quite impactful in the last game, being able to isolate targets away being, and because of that being able to burst them down. You do have Aurora that can also be removing it away. Pretty good. Moskov did really well. Before this as well, so maybe they're not going to want to change it up. It is locked in. This lineup is looking very risky. I mean, it is looking very risky. The fact that they're picking up the Bruno is a very... Uh, it's not a thing to be cause of concern because uh, like Moskov, he does have a getaway mechanic to match Moskov. Right, he can slide away, that's true. But you also have Minotaur that's standing and waiting in the fray. We looked at the different forms of engagements that they had before. They still have really strong engagements that's coming in here. And that's going to be who I'm going to be focusing on, Minotaur. Multiple MVPs yesterday. How well will play? It wasn't... It doesn't look good for them. And I would say that Absolute Pro does have an advantage here just because of their play style. But... We, we shall see. We shall see. Well, it looks pretty standard at this point. The jungle is being secured by Chaos here, ensuring that they have some goal, some XP advantage moving in. But we do have the invade as well, coming from Absolute Pro 3, waiting in the fray. Oh, Gzek taking a little bit too much damage over in the top side there. Just a tad bit of damage, but that's all right. Freya, early game hero, is able to absorb quite a bit of damage, is able to deal a lot of damage out as well. Moskov versus Bruno in the mid lane. If it's not being ganked, who do you give it up to? Hmm, Moskov against Bruno over in the mid lane. I think, I think it, would, it, it would really depend on the skill set, but I would give a slight advantage over to Moskov just because the Abyss Walker and Spear of Destruction gives him a little bit more... Uh, options in terms of long-range damage dealing. Right, so a little bit more utility to help him maneuver the fights that's there. I do agree with that. A little bit of advantage, but Bruno does have some pretty good early game damage as well. Is able to clear quick. Qu we are seeing the return to the top. Well, what, what was a highlight of the very first game yesterday seems to be making her appearance back here again. Well, it's good to see that Smooth playing out one of the more uh, high, not so... Not well, to it's say the best easy mobility hero. hero. Not to say one of the easiest heroes to play, but when played properly and balanced out well in terms of how it works in a team composition. We are seeing Absolute Pro 3 being able to take Turtle away again. This is still that two minute mark. No response. We are seeing a little bit of response, but they are focusing on top. Still, Aurora is on top, not being able to help out with this. With that, we are seeing that level 5 has already been hit. Zuko needs to be cautious about this. Up on top as well, taking a large chunk. She needs to be very, very cautious about this. This is not looking very structured and very good. Tigreal does get engaged upon. Oh no, Zuko, Zuko, will he go down? He's fairly tanky and it's going to be first blood over to the Moscow. But the return they do kill. get the kill though. Dranks trying to take, tank as much damage as he can, but Pro Quack Quack goes for the turret instead, Razor just behind him. They get away without much punishment over in the top side. Gzek and Infa pushing it out. Won't be able to get the turret. However, gets the turret dangerously low over on the top side. Well, just waiting for the wave to come back in so they can further crash. We are seeing that the, the, the little bit of the engagement there did lead to a little bit of a punishment. There's only about 500 gold difference, so not overly severe at this point. The retribution kill coming back in helped quite significantly to balance out the playing field. The top turrets only left about 30%, and that's going to be the next soft spot for them to press upon. Smooth coming in. Aurora Is he going to be spotted out? in for dangerous, dangerous? Oh, nice stun coming in. Gzek right behind, but Pro Quack Quack comes in. Quack, kitty, quack, kitty, quack with the Minotaur trying to do... Trying to show him that, hey, if you go, go, if you go ham, I'm going to go full bull on you. 
We do see that Fanny happily moving around the map, abusing that mobility of hers is, is going to be key. And we do see Aurora being able to you know, stop her a bit, move aside, but we aren't seeing this massive aggression from Absolute Pro 3. We are still a little bit in the laning phase, and where they really shown last game is that when they were setting up within the team fights after the laning phase had moved on. We are seeing a collapse. Ruby is back into the bottom lane. Esther is there to ensure that she stays alive, but she's only up against Tigreal at this point, and that's going to be a pretty safe lane for her. I'm loving the fact that Smooth is just moving around as he sees, as he likes. He goes where he pleases. And this is exactly what Chaos needs to stop. If he's able to move around freely and have a free reign of control over on different sides of the map, then Smooth will be able to create advantages for members of his team and Chaos will be left in the dust. Well, this is going to be singling Turtle coming up again. 30 seconds on the clock. Will they be able to recon it themselves? We are seeing in the middle of Karina. Ooh, very close to being caught out there. Does get a bit of a love tap in the smaller region of the screen. You see that, but that will be fine. 15 seconds now left. Nobody's really moving towards Turtle just yet, hoping to find and catch our rotation. The early bird will get the worm here, so who will be able to set up the engagement and who will be able to capitalize? The freeze does come off, not exactly the target you want to be using it on. I mean, you, you, don't, you don't throw out your coldest draw or your freeze onto a hero that can actually just sustain the damage and just re regen it back later. No. And what's really interesting to note is the fact that AP3 wants the top control. The, the, the proxy here is going to make it that much more because they're going to get a wave crushing in from one side and they have three members. It looks like the oh bait! Oh my goodness, the baits are real smooth. Goes in right into the cutthroat. It's going to be a kill. First into the steel kill. cable again. Gonna... Drags gets a double kill and gets away. Holy cow, smooth is smooth as ice. That was really well set up, getting frozen in place, pretending as if, oh no, I was out of position. Nope, we had teammates waiting right at the end there. AP3 really setting a name up for themselves as the gankers, as the strategists, as the trap makers that are winning. Well, they're definitely winning uh, a lot of these trades coming in. Uh, with, with, with this uh, top control here, they are going to opt towards uh, pushing, uh, getting the turtle because of the resources that they need to divide to settle the, the push that's happening over in the top side. Chaos needs to actually divert their resources and divert their attention over into the top side. If not, they it, might lose more than they can actually afford. It may afford. be too much for them to be able to decide to do it because the bottom tower is going to go down as well. This 4,000 goal lead is going to be going to 5,000 real quickly. In fact, it has already. And this is going to signal the time for, guess what? The top and bottom towers have gone on. Lord, a very big possibility used to such amazing movements in the previous game. It's going to be a repeat. And it's definitely going to be a repeat right here. I, I've, I've called it already. I, I would like to see Chaos make this game a little bit more competitive. By Bruno the up top. Uh, they're going to go up against the Fanny though, and the Fanny goes on a killing spree. Uh, goes without saying, the damage that's coming in from the Fanny over the top side is just way too much for Bruno to actually sustain. This, this is similar to what we saw in the last game as well. You had one member on the bottom lane that got caught out. You have one member on the top lane here that's being caught off as well. You have such high mobility heroes here coming in from Fanny's side. You really do not want to be caught out of position. Many of the team members now in the middle, there is uh, a little bit of engagement. Oh, Spear of Destruction goes through and GZEC takes a little bit too much. That was a nice flicker right into the implosion, but it may be a little bit too much. Oh, Pro Quack Quack takes in a bit of the damage here. Will be able to tank it down and he gets away. That is a nice, nice moonlight coming in from the side of King. However, it's going to be Minotaur that goes down. One for one kill, two for one kill. Not so much in favor for the AP3 team. Well, that's simply because they dove not only one tower, but they were also getting aggro from the second tower. The turrets do give significant damage. And you do, as much as you are really tanky as Minotaur, well, you do not want to be taking all that out. Bruno in so much trouble. The Jukes left uh, right center. Chaos! But you can Red! Oh! oh! Nicely done, but no! The no, Mega Bill no, 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 that was the. Oh, that was the execute right there. Oh. That was nicely done. 
That was really well played. The amount of confidence that we thought Bruno was going to escape, we thought Bruno was going to die. He managed to escape, but no, in fact, it was just slightly delayed. I think, really. I think Bruno could have actually kited out a little bit more and get a little bit more life seal out of that. Uh, I do oh. not know what type of build that he's going for, but normally on not, the Bruno, you'd like this, to get a little bit not off. Not this early game, though. I mean, you are seeing the goalie near Balloon. It is steadily at 5,000 now being kept away. And with Turtle coming up in under 20 seconds, it's going to leave further ahead. Team Chaos needs to group together. They need to start setting up for it now. We are seeing that Fanny is a little bit out of position. She's doing her thing. She's moving around. Bruno once again in her eyesight down in mid lane. They know exactly where Bruno is. But Fanny's going to be rotating. Will they be able to collapse on all sides? Hmm, I'm really interested to see what smooth he's trying to set up here. It's going to be uh, indicated towards the turtle, tur turtle of the game for the side of AP3. I'm wondering whether or not uh, Chaos will be able to do anything with this. Well, no, they won't. Well, taking the turtle already and he's completely gone. This was a really good positioning, making sure that the, none of the heroes from the side of Chaos could move or respond to it. This is strangulation at this point. You're boxing them in so completely on either end. There is an engagement oh going on. Oh my god, Drags gets into the middle of it. That was nicely done by Adestas. A killing spree onto it, but it gets ended by the Moscow. Quack Quack tries to go into the middle of it. Oh my god, the Freya, uh, the, the Fanny goes in, and they will be able to get the turret over in the mid side. And Zuko, Another nicely done though. That sacred hammer at the last minute, keeping him away, almost down to 10 HP. Holy cow. But that's still two of the turrets completely obliterated obliterated into the mid lane. We see Moskov already starting off on Lord, down to half health, down to quarter health already. Just by himself, we are seeing Fanny up at top, pushing as well. This is just spreading all the resources in the right places, and the squeeze is real. And the squeeze is definitely real. You feel yourself getting choked out. And what was really important to note was the fact that that was not possible if Razor did not have the assets to come in with the, bless with the moonlight. He needed to sustain a bit, and despite the fact that Lord was a very tough target to take down, it was e rather easily and quickly taken down by Razor and the, uh, and the Estes supporting him. Definitely. It is teamwork that helped them secure Lord over there. Now, Fanny, big, big minion wave coming and pushing up from bottom. They are ready in the mid lane as well. Lord is with them. What's for certain is that the bottom are going to be taken. Now, what will they get in the middle? What they're trying to get in the middle is... Nobody wants they're to engage. Using, they're using the numbers. Oh my god, coldness. Coldness is cold. It does destroy it, but Jizek is out of position. Zuko won't be able to do anything. It's going to be Essence on a killing spree. The damage is real. Unstoppable is Fanny getting the double kill. Drax will be the third to go down. And it's going to be a double kill onto Essence as well. Nice to see the and support that, getting some kills. That is going to be all she wrote. Bruno oh, getting dragged back in. Borhan with the I'm offended. Getting godlike is smooth. And it's going to be an easy...